doing? We're doing good. How are you doing? <laughs> Can you call me Sunny? I don't know, honey. I meant honey, but maybe <laughs> I, honey. did I call you Sunny? <laughs> Sunny came home. <laughs> Remember that song? Oh, oh yeah, that was a good one. Was that it? album I don't was know. really good. Was it I really? liked it. Yeah. All right. Well. Anyway, uh, anyway, today we're talking about why investing is a moral obligation mm. for us. Uh, and I, I say us, kind of me, but I think you're with <laughs> me. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, I'm with that you. Right? I'm with you. Uh, you know, you're just a little bit more. Um, I'm driving it a driving little more. It. Yes. Yeah. That's but you're correct. on board. Mm -hmm. You know. So. Um, I'm in the front seat with you. <laughs> I think in the church, like I, I talk to people sometimes who uh, just kind of think, I don't know, almost that it's wrong to invest or uh, kind of the, um, I don't know, didn't Jesus say it's hard for a rich man to enter mm. uh, the kingdom of heaven and therefore why would you want to invest and maybe make yourself rich? Like why? Right. Like that, that kind of logic. Mm -hmm. uh, and... You know, I think if you look, and we talk about this a lot, you look through the New Testament, you look at all the Bible verses about money and what Jesus said, and there's this consistent connection between mm -hmm. our hearts and money. Yeah. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. And, and like, the, this connection there is just you can't get away from it. You can't separate it. You're either going to serve God or you're going to serve mammon. It's like you cannot serve both of them. And, and so it always seems to be about our hearts. So whether yeah. we make a little whether we whether, I mean, make a lot yeah. or anywhere in between. I think this is where the church, you know, I say that very broadly, you know, um, but I think this is kind of where we've gotten it wrong a little bit, where it, it's kind of like, are you in the prosperity camp or are you in the poverty camp of like taking a vow of poverty or, you know, you must not really have a great relationship with the Lord if you don't have a ton of money. It's like, I, d I don't think that either of these yeah. are right. I actually don't think that he really cares that much. I think that he cares, think he cares more about, about our heart. what our heart is doing. Yeah. And um, so not more about. I think that is the number one thing. And so if if we are, we can actually have our hearts be in a bad place if we don't have enough money, just yeah. the same as we can if we have too much. Yeah. And, and so anyway, so if you want to know our hearts and mm -hmm. why I choose to invest and yeah. why I feel this is a moral obligation, and we can kind of get into that, but... But the first thing is, like, we're not chasing money just to chase money. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to invest our money to grow it because we're putting our trust in money or because or we're serving. Benefit. Yeah, because we're serving money rather than right. God. But the way that we view it is we view money as a tool that we can use to serve God. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, we can serve money or we can serve God with money. And yep. that's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And so, for me, I feel like the Lord's given me an acumen for this, to be able to do it and to be able to make some money and multiply what he's entrusted us with. We view ourselves as stewards. We understand everything in our possession is not ours, but it's to be managed for his glory and for yeah, his purposes. Right. And therefore, um, why not take what he's entrusted us with and multiply it and turn it into more mm -hmm. for the purpose of advancing his kingdom, mm -hmm. for the purpose of supporting missionaries, you know? Because I know that every dollar that I earn from our investments or from our business or anything else, like that's another opportunity to feed a hungry child. That's another opportunity to help an evangelist win the lost by sending them some of our dollars, yeah. you know, or just honor God in any number of different ways. Yeah. And I mean, if you think about it, like we are a body of Christ, right? And we all have our own part to play. And I think if we view ourselves as the body and we're all helping each other out, that changes things drastically yeah. on, on how we view getting more money. So there are some people who are supposed to be, um, you know, working in other countries and third world nations and things like that, who if they are spending all their time trying to raise funds for that, when I say raise funds, I mean trying to provide for it themselves then yeah. they cannot actually do the work that they're supposed well, to be doing. Well, and there's so many not-for-profits stuck in that trap right. of we have to spend almost all of our time raising money just so that we can, can yeah, and exist spend our money rather than doing the thing that they were created to do. Yeah, and spend our money trying to bring awareness about yeah. this so that we can hopefully get more money. I mean, yeah, it, it is. But, but if we view this as we are the body of Christ and some of us have regular day jobs who they are lucrative or we 
you know, understand how to invest wisely so that we can grow what we have. And then we just funnel that to a different part of the body where they need yep. to be spending yep. the money. Like it just changes your view on the whole thing, I think. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, at the end of the day, like I just view this as stewardship. Like this is just Matthew 25, parable right. of the talents thing. It's like, uh, you know, I know the parable of talents is, isn't just talking about money. Mm -hmm. I understand that. I think it, it's uh, referring to a lot of different things. But I also think it's kind of interesting that he is talking about money in this context. And I don't think we need to completely uh, disconnect that from this parable. Right. And so we have these three different stewards and the two who took risks to take what they were entrusted with and to multiply it were rewarded with more. Mm -hmm. The one who didn't, who had something, was afraid, buried it, didn't do anything with it. <laughs> the master didn't have good <laughs> things to say to him. And so, you know, I believe that we are called to multiply. Yeah. Like whatever it is that we mm -hmm. put our hand to, whatever it is that God entrusts us with, I, I believe that we are called to multiply it and turn it into more, just like that parable illustrates. Yep. And so for me, for God to have given us some resource that we can invest and the ability uh, to be able to do that, like, uh, why not do it? Mm -hmm. and, and why not continue to learn how to invest? Like, that's how I view it. Why not to continue to grow in my ability to invest better mm -hmm. and to be able to earn more? Again, so that I can fun, funnel more of that into the kingdom and help advance his kingdom through learning how to invest. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, And I, I wonder, too, if, like, part of the thought process through it is, you know, I can see myself kind of being consumed by money, so I'm going to try and keep my income small or, you know, mm -hmm. not invest, not grow things so that I don't get into a dangerous position. What do you think would be some good questions to start asking yourself to, to like, start opening up that conversation with the Lord of how do I keep my heart pure in this area yeah. if you want me to grow this and, you yeah. know. Yeah, no, I mean, I think one of the uh, mistakes that a lot of people think make, uh, believers, I think, particularly reading whatever, hard for rich man to enter the yeah. kingdom of God, that mm -hmm. type of verse, because there's a handful like that. Um, I think the mistake is assuming that if I'm not rich, then I'm safe. That's it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, if I can just keep from becoming rich, then I'm safe. But the reality is that the deceitfulness of riches applies to all of us. Right. Like, we're all susceptible to it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't, like, and I've seen plenty of people who are on the poverty line uh, who are lusting for wealth more than some people who have tons of money. Right. You know, and so, and I think in many cases, it's like the complete opposite. And so, that's so important for us to understand that it's not, we're not being safe by just not working hard so we don't get promoted mm -hmm. by not using our money wisely so that we actually have some in the savings account. Yeah. Like, and and I would argue that it's the opposite of that. Like, I don't yeah. think that God created us to just be mediocre and to not try and to not advance. Like, that doesn't seem God honoring. That doesn't seem kingdom minded and kingdom focused. Mm, like, yeah. excellence is God's idea. This is His thing. You are getting really fired up. Well, <laughs> You're I know. To like, talk louder. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, it really yes. does fire me up because yeah. I've seen too many believers who are not running after and using the gifts that God has used them to the fullest because they're bound up in fear about this. Mm. And I think that this is just really, really important. Yeah. And so anyway. Well, and I think one of the practical things that we have talked through a lot, you and I, is, and I I think this went to early days, probably 10 or more years ago, um, where we had this conversation of, you said Billy Graham had a cap on his salary. Yeah. And you were like, I like that idea of putting a cap on what we earn so that, or I'm sorry, so the business can earn whatever, but the salary that we would take out yeah. would have a cap on it so that we are not just like, oh yeah, let's just keep earning more money, more money, more money, and letting the greed hit us. Yeah. But it's actually like putting a safe boundary in place so that above and beyond that, we're able to give the rest yeah. of it away. Yeah. Um, no, and I, I think that's really smart. Uh, you know, in our case, you know, we talk about this. You've probably heard us talk about it if you're listening to the podcast. But in our case, God called us to give our age as a percentage of our income. Mm -hmm. And so that is the, like the same concept where it's like there's some wall in place 
to help continue to add tension to our spending yeah. um, that increases. And so our giving is just continuing to increase each year because of this. And, and it has definitely done that. <laughs> yeah, and it's added tension, which has, has been like tension. really good and really appropriate because it keeps us dependent on God. Mm-hmm. And it it uh, helps systemize to an extent um, us getting in a place where we're just depending on money. We're just depending right. on our bank account. Uh, because that is, you know, like we and everyone else has that same temptation. Like it seems like all of humanity is in this constant um I don't know, uh, race to get to a point where we don't need to depend on God. It's like, how do, how do I work out all the situations I mean, in my life? How do I pray for all the answers to my prayer? So I get to a situation where I don't need God. Right. And it's like, I don't, I think God wants us to always need him. I think we're going to, yeah. this our entire lives, we're going to have to need him one way or another. And mm-hmm. that's when we're at our healthiest and best spot. Yeah. I know we were just talking to uh, some people who lead an organization and he was telling us he's got a real business mind. So he he's running a tight ship with their uh, non-for-profit. Yep. And so as he's talking to us about it, he said, I want to make sure that we can cover 80% of our expenses. And he said, and I say that because I know that if we can cover 100% of our expenses, then we don't have to rely on God at all. And yeah. I, we were both like, oh, my gosh, that is so, it's just really fascinating and interesting and such a smart thing to do. That he is, he and everyone there is are believing God for beyond what they can do in the natural. Yeah. Because there has to be some of that there. Like we cannot forget it. And there are times when it's like there's more than we need and there's less than we need. And where are we? Where's our heart in the whole thing? And a lot of times when it is the opposite of what you're comfortable with, I think that's when the Lord reveals to you what's actually in your heart. Oh, yeah, and absolutely. <laughs> unfortunately, my heart is not 100% cleaned out in that area. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know if we'll ever arrive journey. to it. Yeah. Everyone's on a journey. I, I am absolutely convinced of that. Because even, <laughs> honestly, just the fact when you say I've arrived, like right there oh, proves geez. that you're still on a journey. <laughs> like, so, and yeah, that's and the beautiful thing about it. Yeah, and there are times when I feel it. stronger in my faith in it. Yeah. Than others. Yes. And I think that there's an ebb and a flow. But I I can see myself when as soon as I get comfortable with where we are financially, then I I feel the Lord be like, okay, well, how does this feel? And then he just presses a little button. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, I felt that one. I didn't know I would feel that. But man, you I it it's like it reveals the things in me that I didn't know were still there. But Again, like this is what is so beautiful about it is that he is always trying to purify our hearts and get get another piece of it. Every time we go through that, it's like he's just like, can I just have a little bit more of you? Can I just have a little bit more of you? And it's never in a way for me that feels like, you know, it's his kindness that leads us to repentance. There's not any kind of guilt in there. Yep. It's just him going... I know you see it too. <laughs> let's let's work on it together. You know what I mean? He doesn't leave you in this ditch of, you know, shame and guilt and yeah. sin. Yeah. Like he's there to pull us out and to yeah. bring us closer to him. Yeah. No, I mean, and we've it's so much of this is testing too cuz it's like again, like I think he finds out about our heart when he starts testing us with money. <laughs> Like, because I, I don't know that there's I, much I so that reveals our heart more than mm-hmm. how we think, how we behave, how we act with our money. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I'm thinking of different situations for us. Like, we had a maybe three year period where income increased probably 10 times over a three period, probably 10x. Probably, yeah, probably about 10x over a three year period, which is just insane. Absolutely insane. Uh, yeah. That was a huge heart test. Yeah, and then um, you know, so like we've had such a roller coaster, but like we had a period where our income dropped by probably ninety percent. Um, you know, huge heart and test. That is a huge <laughs> heart test, and uh-huh. and anyway, and it all comes back to like it's in uh, Philippians four, I believe, where Paul's talking about where he says, "I've learned the secret of being content in the high times and the low times. I've learned how to abase and abound." The See, secret of being content. The secret of being content in those situations. I feel like you've prayed for that so many times. And I'm like, stop praying that prayer. <laughs> <laughs> because it does. It takes you on this roller coaster of emotions. But, I mean, yeah, like, 
we, I don't think that we can get our hearts purified if we don't walk through this yeah. stuff. Well, and that is true financial freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Financial freedom is not having a million dollars in the bank. Mm -hmm. It's not having the four-hour work week or anything else. True financial freedom is when you are completely independent mm -hmm. from the worries of that, the worries of finances, uh, where it doesn't matter if you have a ton or a little, you are in the same spot and you can walk with yeah. contentment, with peace, knowing that God's your provider and that you're just going to walk right through it. Yep. Amen. And that, that is a level of freedom that people with $100 million, a $1 billion, whatever, mm -hmm. do not have. You know, I mean, and maybe they do, but by itself, because of the money in the bank, there is no right. amount of money that you can have in a bank where you will have that level of peace and that level of freedom. And we are not there, but we are on our journey, and that is mm -hmm. what I'm after. Yeah. Uh, and at the same time, like, it doesn't matter how little you have. You can still walk with that same level of confidence and assurance that mm -hmm. God is going to provide and meet all your needs. Yep. And so, um, again, that's what we're after. Yep. But For anyway, sure. so we've wandered a little bit on this, but... <laughs> This is the the whole point of this was just explaining why investing is a moral obligation for us, and mm -hmm. ultimately comes down to the fact that um, did we just view it as stewardship of what we have something? Yeah. Why not multiply it? Yeah. And to do nothing with it, I feel like we'd be like that steward with the one talent. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get to heaven <laughs> and have and, him say wicked and lazy servant. Yeah, that's not what I want to hear. Right. You know. So anyway, so if you, uh, we do have a, an investing course where we share really all of our strategies, everything we've used um, to invest. And so mm -hmm. if you're looking to learn how to invest, we'd love to invite you in that course. We'd love to serve you with that. Yep. Um, and basically the course starts from the absolute beginner and just kind of walks through how to set up and buy your actual first investment, mm -hmm. even if you only have a hundred dollars, like, um, and go through down to the point of literally Looking over my shoulder, what buttons to press, everything else like that. Yeah, that's a great question. What do you think a, min a good minimum amount is? A hundred bucks is fine. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and obviously more if you have more, but uh, but yeah, okay, that's that's fine, plenty fine. And honestly, right. we go into um, some options too if you even have less to invest. Uh, but of course, it's itself is going to cost more than that. So point is, <laughs> yes, have a little money to invest before you enroll, but. Uh, but yeah, so it's great for beginners, um, and we lay it out in a way that um, I think, to the best of my studying, is very um, wise um, and just biblically minded. You know, mm -hmm. again, it's not we're not just investing just so that we can uh, build up our bank accounts so we don't need to trust God and go buy yeah. five yachts or whatever. Like, um, you know, and it's like I, great, invest so you can take your wife on a vacation, and so whatever the thing is you want to do, like that's completely fine. I'm not saying you have to give all your money away, but point is the wise thing to do is to be thinking eternally. You yeah. know, it's to be thinking beyond the next 20, 40 years in your retirement and to think for eternity. Mm -hmm. And through that lens, we've determined, all right, how can we use our money eternally? And to me, that means, all right, let's give some now, let's grow some so that we can give more later. Yep. And uh, yeah, and that's Make how we're thinking decisions. eternally. Yeah. So if you're interested in joining us in that course, we currently are running a little bit of a discount on it. So we'll have a link in the description below, or you can just type in seedtime.com slash 10x, so 10x, and that'll get you there if you want to find out more about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we'd love to serve you with it. So anyway, so that is all for today. That's it. See you in the next one. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on the Seed Time Money Podcast. And remember, money isn't the goal, but it's simply a tool to help you fulfill your purpose and your calling. And we'd love to help you achieve true financial freedom faster with our email newsletter. So if you want exclusive money tips and hope-filled encouragement in your inbox, head over to seedtime.com to get signed up.